Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'll be teaching you how to import tables from Microsoft Word into Microsoft Access. I wrote the code out to make this tutorial real quick. So let's begin. I created an import uh, module for this one. I have a table named Users. I have an ID field which is that auto increments. A name field as a string and age as a uh, long integer. I go to the design view. You can see the data types. All right, and then I house the database in this import uh, import word tables on my desktop. And then I have a subfolder called imports, and this is the word document that we're going to import the table from. So we have uh, two columns and four uh, rows. The first column is for the username and the uh, Second column is for the age. So let's go over the code. So I got a, a subroutine that imports the users in, into the assets database. And then I have a function to actually insert the records into the table. So let's go over this uh, subroutine first. So I'm using DAO record set. And I set the record set object to point to the users users table and we're going to add a new record in the field name for the name is called name and the field name for age is called name so I'm just assigning the name and the age and then you got to make sure on the record set after you add the new record you got to call the update method to actually update the table if not nothing's going to update in the table then you want to make sure you close the record set and then set it to nothing I can move this down here so if there's an error it always released up the memory and if anything failed it's going to display an error and then just resume back to this label this is a custom function that I built from our previous tutorials if I do shift F2 you can see it just debug prints and it shows that error number and the error description I'm going to control shift F2 to go back Right, so let's go up here. Now we're in our import users uh, subroutine. I got a users dot path that's going to hold a full path to the import folder to the Word document. I use current project dot path that actually get the path of where my database is located, and then I get access to the the subfolder and then the document. So if I copy this and go to my immediate window, question mark, you can see it's the path for where my database is at. All right, then we have W app as a object. This is gonna hold the Word application object. W that's gonna hold the Word document object. W table is gonna hold the Word document table object. And T row is gonna be used to uh, loop through the table rows and then we have name and age is what we're going to be inserting into the table the table name and assets database is called users all right so as i go through this subroutine i'll be commenting this code I do do command set warnings to turn off alerts. So if we're deleting uh, records from the table, we don't get a pop up if we to confirm that we want to delete the records from the table. This is a custom function that I built as well from the previous tutorials that I made. All this does is delete all the records from a table. If I go to Shift F2 to go into this function. You can see I just simply delete all records from the table name that's provided. So I'm going to shift F2 back. Right, right here we're, we're using a late binding to create a word application. And 
And then once we create the word application, we make it visible. If you don't set uh, the word application to visible, then it's going to always be uh, invisible when you create the word application. Next, from the word application, we use the documents method, and then we call it open to actually open up the Word document, and we use the full path to the Word document. This is the optional pr uh, parameter that we have to skip, and then this set the true makes it a read-only document. And all right. Right, and then from this Word document, since we only have one table in this document, we use number uh, the number one to ask us the first table. If there's more tables in there, you set whatever number it is. You can also do w.doc.tables.count to see how many tables in there. So if you have multiple tables in the document and they're the same format, you can loop through all the tables and import that way as well. So right here, from this table object, we're going to loop through all the rows that's in the document in that first table. All right. And from here, for that name string, we're going to access uh, the row that we're in for that cell. Well, from the cell object, it's going to be whatever row that we're on and then we're going to read that first column because that's where the names are at and then we have to call range.txt to get the text I just do set name and then in Microsoft Word when you're reading from a table the cell uh, cells are padded with a return character return carriage and uh, a bell character at the end. So what I have to do is use the left method and then trim the last two characters off the string because we don't want that in our table. And we do the same thing. We set the age. I'm just using everything as a, a string. Because when we update the, um, the table, it doesn't matter. Microsoft Assets is going to automatically convert it over to a, the integer, what well, along that, that we need. So go over here. And lastly, what well, I went over before that subroutine, we insert the user record. So we so we supply the name and we supply the age. And then at the very end, we close the Word document. If you wanted to, you can also close, uh, quit out the application as well. If you don't call this right here, the Word application will still be open, but the document will still be closed. So for now, I'm a, I don't even want to close the application. I'm going to just remove this. And at the very, at very end, I just put operation complete. Then I remove the memory from the document, well, in wdoc, wapp, and then we can also set w table equal to nothing. Even if you didn't release these, since these are not global objects, the memory will be released as soon as the subroutine is finished. But just in case you did have global variables, that you want to set these to nothing at the very end. And then that, lastly, I set the warnings back to true now. The word actually well in the Microsoft Assets database. So you can see there's nothing in the table right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. You can hit F5 to run it or hit the play button. There we go. We go back to our table, hit F5, you see we have new records. So I'm gonna close this.
put Matt right here to show that it is working. Run this again. And there we go. So if I commented this out right here, in this right here, you'll see that the, the strings are padded. Well, I, I can't do it on here because when I'm trying to insert the, the number, it's going to return an error. So I'll just leave it on the name for now. So when I run this, you're going to see that it's going to have that bell character and that return character at the end of the names. Hit F5. And then if you look at the table, you can see you have those word characters at the end. So you always want to make sure when you're reading from a table cells, you want to remove the last two characters in there. So whenever, even if the cell is empty in a word document, it's always count as two characters. So you never really have an empty string when reading from it. All right. Until next time.